Hi, I'm Joe, and today I'm going to do a video review on the Siemens VersaCharge electric vehicle charging station. This is the box that it comes in. As you can see, it's fairly large. The only thing in the box is the installation and operations manual, which is going to be uh, very useful for the electrician when he or she makes the installation. It's got a lot of useful stuff in it. And also, this manual is available uh, online at the Siemens website. So now let's take a look at the charging station itself. Here's the charging station installed on our garage wall next to the Chevy Volt we just got. Let's take a little bit closer look at the control panel on the front of the Siemens VersaCharge. Power available. That should always be on when it's connected into the uh, house wiring. Ready is going to come on when you've got it plugged into the car. But the car's not yet ready to accept a charge. Maybe the car has a delay set. Charging. That will come on when physical charging is actually taking place. And then you've got a fault light. You really don't want to see that. Uh, in the center, there's a pause button. So if you push it, pause in the charging, push it again, it will resume charging. Now over here you've got delay lights. You have two options really in charging most vehicles. One, you can go into the menu system of the vehicle and set it so it comes on after a certain number of hours or it comes on during a certain time. Let's say your electric rates are lower between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. You can set that up in the vehicle menu and uh, plug this in and then the vehicle will take control of the charging. Say you don't want to go into your vehicle menu, you want to use this to delay the charging for a little bit. If you push this once, you get a two hour delay in charging. Again, four, again, a six hour delay, and finally, you can delay the charge for eight hours. To clear all of this, push it once more, and you're back to where when you plug it into the car, it will start charging immediately assuming the car is set to accept a charge when it's plugged in. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I did the electrical installation on this. First of all, I had an electrician bring a 220 volt box up from the basement where it's wired into the uh, main breaker unit and you can see how that goes and it plugs in right like that. One thing I did want to point out, I put a cord clamp right here against the wall because this cord is so stiff that it tended to pull out from the box just a little bit and expose the plugs. Now it never had any uh, sign of coming undone but the plugs did expose maybe about a quarter of an inch so that cord clamp holds it to a stud in the wall and that keeps keeps it tight in the box. Also you'll note over here that instead of wrapping the cord up around the box like it is recommended I had the cord with another cord clamp and a plastic tie put into a stud here so the cord goes over there where it's semi-permanently installed. Now if I have to I can take that plastic tie off of there and stretch out the cord, but since this car is always coming into the same parking spot in the garage, I felt like that was unnecessary. You'll also note that I've, instead of having the cord stuck in the front, I've got it draped over the top, and I'm going to show you why in just a minute. It's just a little easier for me to simply drape this cord over the top here and let the plug hang at the side. It's not going anywhere. It's very secure there. Rather than having it going here, it tends to be a little bit stiff removing it. 
and it also protrudes out into the garage where you have to walk around it. So I prefer to do it like this, and of course your mileage may vary on that. One thing I want to mention is this. When I said I was going to probably mostly keep this plug over the top like this, because keeping it like this made the cord protrude out into the garage where I need to walk by the car, the manufacturer recommends that the cord be stored exactly like this. So if you have it outdoors, I would strongly recommend you store it like this. The reason being that that protects the charging elements up in here a little bit better from getting any moisture in them. Now there's nothing up here that seals this as such. It's just plastic. It's not rubber or anything. But those charging connections are going to be better protected. So outside under a carport or against some sort of outside wall, put it in there. Inside, I'm going to Put it like that, at least for now, until, unless I see I have some sort of a problem. One other thing I wanted to point out is the way this cord is draped. It lies on the floor flat, so if a person wants to walk by here, uh, you don't have to jump over the cord or crawl under the cord or walk around the car. So that's one of the main reasons I set the cord up like this so that I could get by the car if I needed to uh, to go to any other part of the garage for whatever I might need. So I like it that way and when it goes back up on top of this it comes back up off the floor. So it doesn't lie on the floor when it's disconnected from the car but it's easy to step over when it is connected to the car. Okay, now let's take a look at how this plugs into the bolt. First, I'll open the charging door. And it just goes like this. You heard a click when the charger connected, and then you heard the volt give a little toot indicate that it's charging. And I'll show you the charging lights here in just a minute. You'll notice that the little halo around the uh, VersaCharge pulse is green when charging is taking place. When the car is completely charged it will come on with a steady green. Now Chevrolet for reasons known only to itself has a steady green light when the car is charging and then it pulses green when the car is fully charged. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there but I guess once you get used to it then that's going to be perfectly alright. Uh, this will charge volt from completely depleted in about four hours. We just leave it plugged in all the time as the manufacturer recommends to keep the battery uh, somewhat warm and conditioned. Well, that's all for the review on the Siemens VersaCharge electric vehicle charging station. If you have any questions that you would like answered, please leave them in the comment section under my review. Thanks for watching.